All right, hi, welcome back, Attorney Steve Vonner, and welcome to another exciting episode of Litigation Whiteboard. We're talking video game law today, intellectual property. What are the issues when you're creating video games, you're trying to load them up to the Apple Store, and then somebody says you're infringing, your game's infringing. Well, let's take a look at some of the intellectual property issues in video game development and marketing. Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve litigation whiteboard. All right, I've got the finger today, okay? I got the gold, the, the orange finger. We were talking about video games. We are talking about the various intellectual property rights that can exist in video games. So uh, I just have here in the middle Candy Crush game. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So Candy Crush had a uh, they have a, a trademark actually on the word candy in relation to their video game so you know you have to be careful this is uh, indicative of some of the types of things you may see right off the bat where somebody says you know you're violating my trademark because you have a game where you're using candy okay and i'm going to probably do a separate video i don't know but a separate video on the candy crush you know, Candy Crush is like that, basically the online crack where people just can't put it down and their favorite way to spend time while you're waiting for your friends to show up and whatnot, or waiting for your Uber to show up. <laughs> so let's start right here. First Amendment, the United States Supreme Court said in Brown versus Entertainment that video games are a form of free speech expression. So there are some First Amendment rights in your video games, okay? Now, this is usually in many, like many things in law, you're going to balance them against other rights. You're gonna balance them against trademark rights. When we get over here into right of publicity, you also balance First Amendment with rights of publicity. So for your law students out there, so many things have a little balancing test. We have to weigh the competing interests as we say, weigh the competing interests. But the United States is case law that says it's free expression, the video games. And so that's something that you always want to be thinking about, okay? Now, let's go over here. You got your different platforms. You got mobile games. You got blockchain games are coming up uh, slowly but surely. Uh, you have PC, Mac, these console games. You got games in an arcade. You got all kinds of games, okay? You got board games. You got card games. You got all these things. So the point is it's really hard to come up with brand new ideas never before seen. And so like something like Coracle, that's like, you know, brand new, never sourcing. But there's so many video games, first player shooters, all this stuff. There's just different platforms. So these are where the disputes arise and all the different cartridges, the, the programs, the software code, all this stuff. Um, and it's not, it's not too tough to sort of tip on, uh, walk on somebody else's toes to the point where you're getting a cease and desist letter. Okay, so that's the kind of cases we handle here. Now, um, let's talk about their gameplay content, okay? These are where some of the big issues arise. What are you using in your game? What kinds of items and elements and characters do you have? There was a case I have here, Hummer Vehicles. Can you use somebody's vehicle in your video games? Um, you know, those are questions, right? You need to be careful, you need to find out, you need to do your research. There was a Hummer case in one of the games and they said, well, you know, it's Hummer. They weren't misleading any anybody. It was the true Hummer and they weren't misleading and there was an artistic level to it. And that's where you get back over here to the First Amendment and over here what we call the Rogers versus Grimaldi test. Makes me hungry for pizza every time I say that because I love Grimaldi's pizza if you know what that is. So uh, Grimaldi said, you're, you know, you can do these kinds of things if there's an artistic relevance to it and it's not misleading as to the source or endorsement so you're not you're not misleading people thinking well hummer must have approved that well, you know as long as you're not doing that you can use these kinds of elements in your video game content okay in your code uh, here was another one, architecture and, lo and locations and buildings you know a lot of people don't know that uh, you can get a copyright on the architectural plans for a building. And maybe there would be some issues if you're copying someone. Uh, there was a one video game that had Pig Pen Club and somebody in, L I believe it was LA, somebody said, well, we have the, the, men's, the men's pig lounge or whatever it was, okay? I'm, I'm probably gonna do a separate video on this because it's really good. And so they tried to say, well, you can't do that. You, it's, it looks like our building. Well, it sorta did, but it sorta didn't as well. 
So these are the kinds of fights that can be raised. What kind of content are you using in your video? Um, characters, are you borrowing characters from Star Wars or, or Disney and bringing them into your video games? You need to be careful about that. Those characters, those finely tuned, finely defined characters can be subject to uh, copyright protection. Um, names, like here there was a game, uh, uh, Electronic Arts had a Battlefield game they use the name Bell Helicopter. Can you do that? That's like that's like a whole company. Can you use their brand? But well, once again, we get back here to artistic relevance. Was it misleading as to the source? Rogers versus Grimaldi, understanding that Brown versus Entertainment, the United States Supreme Court recognized First Amendment rights. Okay, so these are some. Just a, this is just a portion of the different types of issues that can arise when you're designing, marketing, you're uploading your uh, games and somebody else, maybe they're bigger than you. A lot of times you'll see uh, somebody will take an idea very similar to a successful company and they will try to put their own spin on it. And oftentimes it's a little too close uh, where they're saying, hey, they, you're violating my trademarks or my trade dress. My, you're violating my copyrights, things like that. So these are the things you need to be careful of when people say, well, what is video game law? This is what video game law is. It's dealing with the intellectual property rights, making sure you're not infringing if it's a trademark or copyright that you have some kind of fair use or there's a parody or what you're doing is transforming certain things into something new. Uh, music, making sure if you're using, using music in your video games that they're properly licensed and things like that. There's a call now. So hang on one second. Let me take this. Yeah, you're calling about video games? Oh, okay. So yeah, so back to my thing here. So basically, these are the kinds of things. And also, right of publicity is another important one. These are, these are, <laughs> these are your sports games where you're using someone in their jersey. You're using their jersey, their swing. Um, or like pr uh, professional stars, you're using their dance move, entertainers and singers, songwriters, you're using their dance moves. Did you know dance moves, choreography and pantomime can be copyrighted? So if you're copywriting some real world star and they have a copyright protection on their, let's say their, their chore choreographed dance, putting that in your game can lead to legal problems, okay? Uh, what else over here? Uh, NFTs are coming up. That's being big in-game purchases of NFTs, uh, making sure the NFTs don't infringe on any copyrights. That's another area. And basically crypto and uh, some of the micro payment things that are going on in the blockchain world. So this is all really interesting. It's a quick, uh, very quick overview of video game law. I'm going to put out a few cases in this area so you can get an even closer look digging down into the copyright, the trademark, the right of publicity issue, and even trade secrets. And don't forget, design patents can also come into play, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in another video. I don't want to keep it too long. I got to run. Have a great day. That's a quick look at video game law. Bye now.